Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for tuning in. I, of course, am Rotype. We're back here in our Factorio guided series with Mouse Gunner. How are you doing today, Mouse? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Doing well. So today, we're going to pick up where we left off last time and actually get some green science kind of produced and actually automated so we don't have to deal with this boxing stuff we've been doing a lot recently. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do, we've got part of this. Uh, I'm going to finish out this line here. This is going to be our green science input. And green is simple, at least because you can have input on the one side and output on the other. You don't have to worry about two lanes or anything like that. And I generally run this pretty simply. And we'll just put a, uh, you're actually standing right in the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll I would just, a, I was making inserters while you were talking because I knew we would need some. Uh, yes. So this will be we pretty much only need one of these machines for a great number of green science. And let's see how many we have here. One, two, three, four, nine. So 12 is the number that we will be running off one. So I can just go ahead and place 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. And you want the same on the other column as well or no? No. So the other column will be our red science. Red science. Of, okay. If I remember correctly, and I'll go check this in a minute, we can run 12 red science off of one gear factory. Again, I'll check this in a second, but... That's probably why we have just the one gear factory over here. And then let me count here. This is probably what I think nine was the column length, right? I believe so. Yeah, so nine. So we can probably extend this to, well, you know what? Before I say for sure, I'll go check. But that'll do for now. Then this is a, a pretty simple setup here. So this is where we'll run the iron plate. And then I'd like to do simple things like this where you can run the iron plate under and this gives you a nice space for a box I don't actually have. There we go. And you can kind of do this connection here for, if I find the right button, gears. And then this will just support, because you don't even really need the box there because the inserters will pass them to each other. Mm -hmm. That way you can run both of these machines off of the same input line of iron. So this, this one coming down will be iron. The gears will take what they need. They'll pass the gears over to the transport belt machine. And just as simple as that, we now have transport belt, which is half of what we need for green science. So just for clarification, the lower ones here will be taking iron iron plates into both of the assembly machines. And then one gear will go over to the conveyor belt assembly machine, right? And then right. that will go over to the belt over here. That's correct. And the nice thing about... I don't remember if I've mentioned this before, but I tend to do a lot of my setups in kind of these column fashions. And the reason I do that is because it's really easy. Let's just say we need to double our production of green science. So if this is the right ratio, one transport belt machine to whatever this was, 12, I think, green science machines, mm -hmm. we want to run 24 green science machines. I can just say, oh, they're done. And then just run this, make this column longer. It does oh. get kind of unwieldy, especially when you have like a 24 machine long column. Uh, some people don't like that because it's space inefficient. I tend to not really care because it's an infinite map and I want to make it clean and easy to just expand when I want to. Okay, that makes sense. So for now, I'll pick these up because we don't need that much. And I tend to find this setup with just one factory here and the 12 green will run science pretty well until the point where you have robots and can kind of expand things a lot more easily. And that's generally the trend when I'm building these early game setups is get it to where it'll work and to where it'll work long enough and well enough such that I can then have robots. Because once you have robots, rebuilding things is a lot more simple. And the more complicated space, you know, maybe more space efficient setups, but things that, that would be more useful for late game you can just set up with robots and spend a whole lot less time building them out by hand. So the next thing we need here is the inserters. Now the inserters are also pretty simple. They also just take the, the ratio here is just one gear wheel into an inserter. So this will be our, again, if I find the right button, Inserter, so we can run this. Whoops, I didn't give enough space. 
and we'll do a similar thing here. This will be iron again, coming up. And again, the same kind of setup here. Iron needs to go in both directions. When gears are done, they go directly over here into the inserter. And the only other thing the inserters need are green circuits. Which we have come up here. Yep, on the bus. on the bus. Mm -hmm. That's right. So as you can see, this just becomes, and you'll see this over and over again and over again as we build things, it's pretty much just get it set up so you can pull something up off the bus. And if you're clever, you can come up with these nice little column formats where you just pull it up from the bus. This gets handled, you know, however you need to. The only tricky thing here is you do need some way to get the inserters kind of back over to where you need, but that's generally not too bad. I, there are clever ways to do it. This is kind of the, the brute force, just run it over and you need it on, actually you need it on this side. That was my mistake here because as we've covered before, the inserters place on the far side of the belt. So the transport belt is going to be over here. Mm -hmm. So to make things even or to, to not back up one material when you have, we need to fill in another one, we need to get the inserters on this side. So this, again, there are lots of different ways to do this. This seems to me just to be the simplest. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I was about to ask you. Okay. So we use a, a T junction. Well, kind of to get yes, that going. A lot of times it will be a T you'll see like, um, you know, you'll have something coming in like this and then another material like that. That way you're forcing it to load, you know, with one a material on one side, one material on the other side. Here we know because the only way the transport belt is getting on this belt is from this inserter. We know it's always going to be on this left side. So if we just dump the inserters on the right side, we know that that's going to be fine. The only other thing here is you don't want, obviously, to pick this up here because the inserters won't be there. So you pick them up here. Up there, yeah. Not okay. a big problem. Let me just run down, you know, do this for this whole column. And anyone, if you're not clear on exactly how this is going to work, you'll see once we get the, the objects moving on the belt, how this will be on the side that we want it to be. Uh, and actually, so I assume you, you moved this. Yes. This is not quite what, we're up to, what we want. I mean, oh. you, we can make it work that way. I, I, I probably confused a little bit because I started with this thing. Oh, okay. You're going to put the inserters over there. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. I changed my mind. Um, and as, I mean, it's a good example of many different ways to do it. Well, but yeah, no, as long as okay, one yeah, I item see. is on the one side, the other items on the other side, doesn't really matter. See, this is good that we cover this because this is one element for me as a new player that is one of the most confusing things about the game is figuring out how to get things on the right side of the belt. So anyone else that's coming from this from the same perspective I am, I'm, I'm feeling that you probably are just as confused as I am sometimes with these kind of things. And this is right. just a solution to get that worked out. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get this set up, um, you know, get the materials in and turn the power on, and then we can come back and we'll show it when it's running. Mm -hmm. That way we can, you know, if there's anything that's still a little confusing or, or just something we should talk about, we can do that. So I'm just going to give these a little bit of power. Let's see, where is our nearest power? We're very far away from power. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get this running because this will be a good focus point to talk about how the sides of the belt and how those work and, and you know stuff like that all right so right now i'm just going to get the uh circuits the green circuits going and yep. might not be the most elegant at the moment but i'll get it where it needs to be yeah and that's this we're still in early game where that's all that really matters get it, get it down and get it on oh, apparently i need more Underground yeah, belts. The lack of materials phase of the game. So there are a couple different ways of doing these underground belts. Um, this is asymmetric, so this is just wrong period. <laughs> but there are different people have different theories where someone, uh, some people operate like this, where you know if you're coming in, you just under go underground exactly the distance you want and then come back up. I kind of like that because it's much more easy to visualize what is happening. So you don't have this kind of extra space that your mind has to fill in. Like here you say, okay, the green circuits disappear here and they, and you kind of have to propagate it in your head. I don't know. It's not much, but when you have a lot of these going on, 
it's easier for me to see that I only have to skip one and say, oh, there it is again. Mm -hmm. Other people have the theory where, you know, I paid however, however many resources an underground belt, you know, I paid 10 whole iron plates plus whatever the, the belt cost is. So I want to get as much distance as I possibly can. And so then they'll, you'll end up, you know, seeing things like that where they're, they're a little more spaced out. Another one of those things where nobody is, I guess, wrong. It's just how you want to play the game. Speaking of iron plates, looks like we're a little low on them. Yeah, it looks like our kind of hodgepodge green circuit factory is sucking them all up. Although we're not even producing that much. Let's see, I wonder why that is. It looks like we don't have a lot of ore coming in. And I'm just looking at the saturation of the belts, right? So the mm -hmm. iron plate belt is very unsaturated. And so the next thing, I'll just skip the smelting area altogether and look at the ore belt, also unsaturated. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we just need more ore. And I'm running down here as if I have miners. Luckily, I can build them. Yeah, so it looks like I'm going to go ahead and just... I have enough miners that I can make. I'm just going to saturate this entire field, and it'll back up the belts for a while, but it'll just be nice to not have to worry about it anymore. You get to a point sometimes where you don't want to have to keep coming back to your raw resource area. You'd rather just mine it up and, and let it saturate, come back to it when it's empty. So you're putting down miners down? I Yep, I'm going to try. I think I have enough that I'm going to try and just fill this entire patch. Because I okay. don't want to have to come back here. I get, I get lazy, and especially before we have the technology that lets you run a lot faster, it's it's just a hassle to run. So I don't want to have to run all the way back here. Oops, those aren't connected. I got it. All right, so now that he has that sorted, I'm going to go back over the line and start bringing it over to where we need it. Yeah, so you can see how, especially once once you get the hang of it playing multiplayer, this gets a lot easier and a lot faster because, you know, one person doesn't have to keep running back to the raw materials area, for example, to add miners. You get quite helpful. Yeah, I noticed that. And in, in the forays I've done on my own, it does take... Quite a lot longer to get things going, for sure. Yeah, I mean, even even in this kind of guided series where we're taking some time to explain and you don't necessarily have a ton of experience, I want to make sure you understand, we're still kind of flying through. I mean, by no means any of those people that do speed runs or anything, but we're flying through at least my normal pace, which is probably quite slow for a lot of people, but... Yeah, somebody showed me a video of a speedrun of Factorio that was, I think, two hours to the completion of the game. Yeah, I think the unofficial world record, not that, I don't know how there would be an official one who's keeping track of that, but it is, yeah, something like an hour and 49 minutes or something like that, which, he, to be fair, I guess, the, the one guy in particular that I know who does them, runs them on a specific map seed with an exact, lay, like, he already has his factory. He knows what he's going to do. He just has to go through and do it. But, you know, if that's what you, you feel like doing, good for you. It's not my play style, but who am I to tell anybody how they're supposed to play the game? Okay, I'm going to use a splitter to bring over the iron plates to the other line. I don't know if that's the most efficient way of doing it, but you can yell at me when you get back. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's fine for now. We're still in this early game phase. I do have kind of a, a lesson plan covered on the, the ideal ways to split off the bus and how to kind of set up these things. For now, yeah, that's this will work just fine. The only other thing I'm going to add is down here on the bus proper, I'm just going to add one here. And I don't remember if the bus is above or below this, but just so when we drag the bus down, we'll still have some available. Okay, well, I didn't bring the bus any further down, so it should be roughly where it was. Yeah, I, I just ran that copper down when I was going just because 
you know, anytime you're running down, I feel like, especially up and down the bus, it's helpful to bring something with you. Okay, so what is this uh, line going to? It's coming down. Uh, this underground that just that I brought up on this. Oh side. no, no, the one I'm standing on right here. Ah, so this is where the science will come out. We haven't actually put the inserters in, but so you know, it's the only inserter I have, so I'll use that as an example. Oh, okay. And then, so this will be one half green science and one half red science and i'm not just running it directly into labs because eventually we're going to need to run the blue science and purple science into the labs as well so what my plan is is we'll take this and i'll just do a little this will probably change but for now just kind of run these over here and i'm going to leave some space to do the blue science and purple science and let's see probably that's probably more than enough, but that'll be good. And then this, again, in this kind of column orientation that I I have a habit of using, I don't have any labs on me either, but we can run labs similar to assembling machines, you know, just on either side of this, like this. Yeah, there we go, got some labs. And that way, again, you can just extend the column as far as you want. You want science to go build more labs. The belt is already there in a nice fashion that you can you can just extend it, not have to worry about it. Uh, I have almost no materials of any kind. Yeah, I kind of run through mine as well, so I'm going to have to get more here. I just want to place down inserters because I have, I have a lot, so I figure I might as well do that. Yeah, so it looks like we have... Let's see, why is this not running? Oh, yeah, we're still just having an iron shortage. So we should have a lot more iron coming in now. Okay, and we have it's power hooked moment. up as well. We just need to connect everything to it. Yeah, the, those poles are powered, so it, it just hasn't been distributed. Yeah, so now it looks like we're having a smelting iron issue. And again, I, I've discovered that by looking at the belt saturation. So if you look at the iron belt, the iron plate belt, it is unsaturated. Same as it was before, basically telling us we don't have enough iron plate. Now when I look at the iron raw bus i'm looking at it and it's fully saturated it's you can see here i'm looking at this splitter and it's hardly moving it's you know kind of shrugging along and that tells me we have plenty of raw material we don't have enough ability to convert it into these iron plates unfortunately i only have three furnaces in my pocket but better than zero but that just leads to another like okay the next thing i need to do is build smelting and instead of needing to go get more mines or whatever else you may need to do. Do you need furnaces? Need. I've got a lot of stone in my pocket, so. I do actually have a bunch of stone as well, so I can make Okay, some. you're good. All right. Yeah. I'll go ahead and build out the iron furnace area just a little bit more so we can temporarily at least resolve this iron shortage. I forget if we had a box somewhere for resources, but I'm just going to go and... Vacuum up the the already scarce resources. <laughs> we do have a box for iron plate and copper plate. I Speaking of copper plate, does this look a little sparse to you as well? It does look sparse. We haven't necessarily had it be a problem because we're not using a ton of copper right now. But yeah, again, you can look at the copper plate is sparse, and then you look up here at the copper ore, that is also sparse. So that, again, right. is that... All right, we need more miners kind of solution. Well, we only have like three, I think, so. Yeah, I tend to go pretty rare or pretty light on the copper smelting at first just because until you really start using the electronic circuits, the green circuits, you don't need a ton of copper plate. Now that changes in mid to late game where you start really using the, the circuits. But in the early game, you, know, you just kind of throw some on. Every once in a while, I'll go add a few more. Usually not too much of a problem. All right. I'm going to do a little bit of, of changing of the way the line comes in, but it shouldn't affect too much. Oh, and I'm out of inserters again. Yeah, it's easy to see how this game just ends. Oh, we need some of this, and then you fix it, and... That exposes a weakness somewhere else. You need some more of that. 
Unfortunately, that is the end of our episode. So I know we tried to get green science demonstrated. We got it built. So at the start of next episode, we'll cover a little bit of how the half and half belt system works with the visual representation of it. But with that, I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, my name is Monroe Type. He's been Mouse Gunner, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.